You have to conquer your emotions and your desires or they will conquer you. It's very hard to conquer yourself. Even though we are born with ourselves and we know ourselves better than anyone, it's very hard to conquer yourself because most people don't even know where to start. You are such a broad thing. It's very vast, it's very vague at points. You just don't know where to start, but you really have to sit down, quiet your mind, and really think, what am I doing that I'm not happy with? Do I have control over this? Nine times out of 10 it is, for example, um, let's, say, um, let's say I was very lustful. It's like, okay, self, what am I not happy with? It's like, I'm very lustful and it ruined relationships with certain people and things like that. And it's like, can I control that? Absolutely. So what should I do about that? I need to desexualize my brain. I need to do this. I need to do that, right? We have to stop giving our control to our thoughts and our feelings because we are the ones that are observing these thoughts and feelings. Your feelings and thoughts aren't you. They're totally separate things. And when you learn to separate yourself from your thoughts and feelings, then you can start to control yourself. So many people you know, that are very lustful. They ruin relationships with people because they are just they just come off too strong. You know, their sexual energy is not able to be tamed. We are nat we are naturally sexual. We're supposed to be like this, but you have to be able to control your desires. You need that self control. That self control comes from discipline. And once you develop a discipline so strong, you won't need self control. I can walk into a room full of this and that and not indulge because I have discipline. I don't have to, you know, hold myself down like, oh, no, no, I don't want anyone, you know, to bring anything to me because I can't. I don't need that. I'm disciplined and I know myself and I'm not moving off that path. Right. Some people get around, uh, let's say dudes, for example, they are overly sexual, lustful, you know, and they get around girls and girls will open up to them and be vulnerable, but they will find a way to use that opportunity to sway them into some type of sexual interaction. A girl would vent to them and they just wait and like, ooh, let me, let me use her weaknesses to, you know, do that. And you gotta be able to control yourself because that's not genuine. I've actually been around a girl one time and she was talking and we was just vibing. We had a, you know, a nice little time. And she was like, Siobhan, you know many people think you're gay, right? And I'm like, what? I'm like, what makes you say that? And she was like, because you're just not like other dudes. And I'm like, you're going to have to come with more than that. Like, you you just lost me. That makes no sense. And she was like, well, every boy I've been with, every boy I've, you know, been around, they've all tried to touch me. Like, I've, I haven't been able to sit around a dude for 10 minutes without them trying to touch me. And, you know, it's just, it's just different. Like, why won't you touch me? I'm like, for one, why do you want my validation so much? But it's like, that's sad. For it to not, for it to be so socially rare for a man to not be able to sit around a woman and behave himself and not want sexual desires from them or, you know, any sexual activity that he has to be thought of as gay or not attracted to women is very sad to me. I thought that was very sad, but very profound. I was like, okay, you still got some more cookies? Like, this is, this is ridiculous, right? But so many people fall into their desires and their emotions and they become controlled by them. That's why you keep relapsing. You keep allowing these thoughts and these emotions and these feelings and these hormones to just take over your body, but you have to stop giving your control to things. Right, I actually have this little um, thing I want to show y'all real quick. Give me one second. Let me show you something real quick. All right. So this right here, I call it the eternal love and self-control mural. So all these things right here are things that the last girl... I was with gave me and you know things we collected like we made clay pots all that alcohol and stuff I, I got that and I put it here because I don't drink um, she was the one who inspired me to put the flowers in the bottle um, you know I kept everything she's ever given to me and there's more stuff than this but handwritten letters the first bracelet she gave to me goggles we use um, she made that for me stereo she gave me for my birthday and things like that 
Um, just a very significant thing. She painted that for me. But I'm going to explain to y'all why I call it that and the meaning behind it. Hey, let me set this back up for y'all. And make sure the camera is clean. Okay. So the meaning behind that is that all those things on that dresser, right, have had access to many people's emotions, whether it be alcohol, alcohol, whether it be uh, memoria, you know, symbolic things, however you want to put it. All those things have brought out emotion, good, bad, and ugly out of people, right? We, we go crazy over the people we are in love with. You got drugs, you got everything on there, right? So I look at it, for one, I, when I love, my love doesn't stop. I would never throw those things away. As long as that stuff can stay there, you know, natural disaster, whatever, as long as it's there, it's there. I'm not throwing that away. That is a part of me, right? And many people don't have the strength to walk past something like that every day without being with a person. That, that's just the way some people are built. A lot of people can't sit around alcohol and go through things and not indulge in it. But the reason why it's called it the eternal love and self-control mural is because I'm attached to things or I've had attachment to those things, but I can walk by them and not indulge in them. And I mean that indulge physically and mentally. Those things don't hurt me to walk past because I've dealt with myself and I can control myself. She painted me a picture that's up there, right? And I, I will keep those things forever. Many people go through their breakups and they delete pictures and they got to get rid of this and get rid of that. But that's part of you. You know what I'm saying? You got to be able to stand around all these things and not indulge in them. Now, on your journey to recovery, I absolutely agree that you should um, get rid of access. Like if you're a drug addict, get away from drugs. But you want to build that strength up to where you could sit in a room full of drugs and never indulge. I've been out to bars. I've been out to parties. I've seen crazy things. Right. But I've never indulged. I always wanted to be in my right mind. I've always wanted to get everybody home, including myself. You know what I'm saying? I always wanted to be safe and I never wanted my brain chemistry to be altered. So I never indulged. When I was growing up, I told people I would never smoke and I would never drink. And I never did. Now, people think that I smoke because of my eyes always red. But my eyes get irritated very easily and they get very red and they're very tired right now. I probably look high right now. But I've never indulged in these things, and they always would tell me, well, you're going to get to high school. Somebody going to get you to do it. Somebody going to get you to do it. Got to high school. It didn't happen. Well, when you get out of high school, somebody going to get you to do it. No one has gotten me to do it because I'm disciplined to myself. It's not a lifelong achievement. Like, I'm not going to piss on you if you indulge in these things. Every, we all got our own vices, right? We all got our own vices. There's things I've done that I'm not proud of, and you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying you're not proud of your vices, but you know what I'm saying? To each of their own. But that's just a personal record I want to hold up, and no one's going to, you know, influence that upon me. If I wanted to do it one day, it would totally be my decision. But I'm just making the reference because that's the self-control I have. Lust controls you. Take back your control. Anger controls you. Take back your control. You get mad at people. They are controlling you. But you, you, were, you always complain about not having control in your life, but you give all your control away. When you can literally, there's, there's only one thing you can control in this life, and that is your decisions. So you should hone in on it, control your decisions, be more conscious of what you're doing, and live the best possible life that you can, or the best life possible. And I don't know if that, you know, click right, but you, you can... <laughs> You are more powerful than you know. You really are. And another point that I wanted to make back to that mural is that everything in this life does not deserve a reaction. Everything that people say doesn't deserve a reaction. Every thought that comes into your head doesn't de deserve a reaction. If you're scrolling on social media and you're going to run past this on your journey to clean up, right? Someone might ask you, hey, bro, you want some drugs? Or, hey, bro, you know what I'm saying? You might be scrolling on social media to see a half-naked girl might trigger you. You don't have to react to that. 
you can scroll right past it or make a mental note like, yep, that's exactly what I need to get off of here and delete social media. But we are so caught up in life that we think just because someone says something to us that we don't like, we have to give them a reaction. Just because someone comes off a certain way that we have to give them a reaction. Just because someone says something, just because a thought comes into your head that you have to entertain it. But you don't. You really don't. And the longer you stay on that journey, the more you will realize that the things that you should react to, the things that you should entertain are the things that are good for you. Right. When you get that feeling to go do something, exercise it. When you don't feel like doing it, do it anyway. Right. Control what you can control and control yourself. Conquer yourself, because when you learn to do that, no one can take anything away from you. And there is nothing like being able to control yourself, your emotions, and your desires and just becoming one with yourself. There's nothing like it. There's literally nothing like it. Because you then, then you finally are not a slave to your mind and your desires. You own them. You have taken back the control. And it makes your life a whole lot better. I've been on, you know, each side of the fence, enslaved to thoughts and desires and, you know, now owning them. If I choose to indulge in something, it's completely my choice. And if I choose not to, I'm done with it. You know what I'm saying? So I love y'all and um, take back your control. And if y'all want to, y'all want to see um, a, a little unboxing, because I got some boots that I just ordered some of my uh, favorite boots if y'all want to see. If y'all want to if y'all want to stay and watch it, then that'll be cool. You know what I'm saying? It's my this will be my first reaction to them. Also. Yeah, got some cowboy boots cuz I'm a cowboy. And see see the thing is when, when you get in boots like this, you got to be a person of purpose, right? And a person of purpose is not enslaved by their thoughts and their desires. So I had to conquer myself to earn these boots right here. You understand what I'm saying? And y'all going to see exactly why I had to conquer myself to earn these boots. Because these ain't no regular boots, baby. These ain't no regular boots. That's some snakes. Python. I appreciate you for staying, man. Damn. Oh, yeah, I'm about to put a mile on these. But uh, like I said, man, control yourself. You got this. I got you. We got this. We good. I love you, and I will talk to you soon. All right? Give me some. <laughs> I'll see you in a minute.